Hi everyone, Reza here. Today, instead of our usual step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll be addressing some of your questions from the chat and emails about Megalites, a new experimental feature in Unreal Engine. Debuting in Unreal Engine 5.5, Megalites was highlighted at Unreal Fest 2024, where Epic Games demonstrated its power by running scenes with over a thousand lights on a standard PlayStation 5. They touted its efficiency even on mid-range hardware, positioning it as a game-changer for next-gen development. But the real question is, is Megalites just hype? Or is it truly worth considering? Let's dive in and find out. Here I am inside the editor. I've got the stunning ancient cathedral environment by the talented Mike Kurabi loaded up in my level link is in the description below this scene is perfect for today's demo packed with over 500 omni spot and rectangular lights even with my 1490 we might see a performance dip now every time you hear the word mega lights think about dynamic shadow casting lights in real time Let's set up the scene first, so we can see Megalites in action. Now, in order to see Megalites in action, you need to make sure that your project settings is set up properly. So I'm going to go into Engine and I'm going to find Rendering. And in here, you need to make sure that your global illumination is set to Lumen. Under Lumen, use hard ray tracing when available is ticked. Also, hardware ray tracing rollout, if you expand that, support hardware ray tracing should be enabled. For ray lighting mode, I'm going to switch from surface cache into hit lighting reflection. And in the default RHI, I need to make sure instead of default, I have DirectX set up. So that's the first step to make sure you've got all the necessary components to run Megalites. Just a quick tip, if you use Kitbash models, sometimes you run into artifacts and errors. For example, with this guy, if I open it up in the settings and the details panel, make sure that under fallback target, relative error is enabled. This is a very useful property that allows you to specify an alternative static mesh that will be used in situations where certain features like nonite are not supported. Also, if objects are kind of disappearing from your scene, make sure distance field resolution scale is set to one. That's another gotcha moment, especially with Kitbash models. The default is set to zero, so it adjusts the resolution of the mesh's distance field, which allows the objects to appear in your scene if they somehow not showing with Lumen. The next thing that you need to always look at when you work with mega lights is the complexity of your light after all if the lighting situation is not complex it's really not worth using mega lights how to see that and how to bring that into uh, use it's through a very simple visualization option if i press alt 7 that takes me from a lit view into light complexity, which starts from a cool color all the way to warm. And you can see pretty much anything that I have in this scene looks more or less warm, which says that the complexity, the lighting complexity in my scene is pretty high. And that makes it a good candidate for mega lights. You can press Alt 4 to switch back to lit mode and that uses Lumen. 
Now for good measures and with Mike's permission, I'm just going to deactivate some of these external lights. For example, this uh, BP sky sphere, I can disable it. The light direction that I have in the scene, I can disable it. I want to get rid of this light right here as well, which I believe is one of the lights in the scene, a spotlight that's shining behind a window. So I'm going to go all the way down. You can see how many lights we have in the scene. That's incredibly insane. And I'm going to turn that off. Now with that, I'm going to introduce another new feature in Unreal 5.5 Sun and Moon Day Sequence Actor to demonstrate better how exactly Megalite work. So I'm going to go in here into all and type in Sun moon day sequencer actor and it drops itself in my outliner you can see now it gives me a preview time of the day preview which that i can just go in there and specify a type of light that i want just going to fine tune it ever so slightly so i get good amount of indirect light and um, sort of washed out shadows coming into the scene. And that's where you see the value of Megalite. Now I'm going to go into post process volume and type in Megalite. Look at areas like this pillar right here. If I can maximize my scene ever so slightly and zoom back a little bit and pressing G to hide all the gizmos, see what happens when I enable Megalite, Megalite on. And you can see immediately how it tames and controls the amount of dynamic shadow that I have in the scene. Look at the rim of these windows, look at this pillar, look at these steps right here and the overall shadow information in the scene. Off and on. It is so incredible to see that this feature uses the ray tracing scene for larger geometry shadow and utilizes screen space traces for smaller geometry, which optimizes the performance. It's absolutely incredible. If you wish to visualize how Megalites works and what type of light Megalite sees as complex, simply Put in the console command rmegalites.debug and enable it. Put one in there and start moving your cursor. So certain lights, you can see that the tile type is simple. But as soon as I hover my mouse on one of these source lights, you can see the tile type switches to complex. And that's how Megalite basically differentiates an easy solve compared to a complex one, which is pretty incredible. I'm going to go in there and disable that debug set to zero. So that's one area that Megalite can work and help you in a complex heavy scene. But that's not it. The next one that I'm about to show you is performance efficiency. So let's drop in a third person in my project. I know the style doesn't really go well with the scene, but let's just for the sake of having an example, um, game mode override set to third person. And I can just press play to see that little guy in action. And I can sort of move forward. But in order to see the frame per second, I need to enable that stat FPS in the console command will enable frame per second. Now, right now, Megalite is off. And you can see if I press play, I'm running on 46 ish frame per second. So I can move, it kind of bounces between 40 to 50 on certain areas. As you can see, based on where I'm going and what type of result I'm getting. So I'm moving forward in here, let's say that, and it's 40 to 50 frame per second. I'm going to go and enable Megalites 
and then play the game again. Now look at the frame per second. Jumped from 40 to almost 90 frame per second. This is another area where Megalites maintains constant GPU overhead, unlike the classic deferred shading, which increases in cost as the number of lights grows. Here are some optimization guidelines and limitations to consider, as this feature is still in the experimental phase. For optimization, avoid placing light sources with large bounds or embedding them within the geometry. It is beneficial to merge smaller lights into larger area lights and optimize their attenuation range for lights. Additionally, using console command as we demonstrated in the video to debug and visualize ray paths can help improve light placement. Regarding limitations, this feature, Mega Lights, operates with a fixed per pixel light sample budget. What does this mean? It means that it restricts the number of effective lights and as a result, it relies heavily on a denoiser. That's why you might experience noise or artifacts in your scene. Well, the good news is these are all temporary and Epic Games will address those issues in future versions. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, reach out to me directly through the comments on YouTube. And until the next video, see you guys later.